Hello students, so from today we are going to bring a new series for you 250 questions of ethics which is going to involve not only the questions made by our institution but also the previous year questions. We will be discussing previous year questions with solutions, how to write it, how to go through it, how to go through the paper, how you are going to uh, delve into understanding of the concepts which are asked in the questions, how you are going to answer them in the uh, required word limits. Along with it, we also have to see the structure of the answers you are making and how to complete those answers in the time bound manner. That is very important because one of the major thing which happens in ethics is students are unable to complete the syllabus within the stipulated time and then you know what ends up happening is you are unable to do the whole question paper in three hours. So let us discuss we are going to take up three important question from 2023 question paper. We are going to break those questions down. We are going to see how to make good answers out of those concepts which have been asked, how to organize them in a nicer way, how to uh, be in the word limits and then uh, write those answers in the given time and within the range means 150 words or whatever be the range written. So let us uh, just dive into it. Uh, the first question uh, which is of uh, 2003, 2000 sorry 23 um, uh, year 2023 ethics paper. The first question is what do you understand by moral integrity and professional efficiency? What do you understand by moral integrity and professional efficiency the next thing is in this con in the context of corporate governance so you have to tell what does moral integrity and professional efficiency means in the context of corporate governance and illustrate with suitable examples and you have to give suitable examples also so three important concepts comes up here first is corporate governance second is moral integrity and the third thing is professional efficiency if you do not know any of this or you have a vague idea of what moral integrity is or what professional efficiency is or what do you mean by corporate governance if you think that's a new thing uh, you are reading because what uh, everywhere you have read is only about public governance or public administration not the private administration then you will be in trouble so just try to pay attention to the words and try to understand the concepts of what they are asking and how those concepts are being linked with one another so how uh, in the context of corporate governance the roles of moral integrity and efficiency that is what the question is asking what role does moral integrity and efficiency play in corporate governance to simplify the question they are asking the examples of it so let us first understand what do you mean by corporate governance so corporate governance there are different kind of governance you know governance is a simple thing it is very complex but in a definition we can put it in a very simpler way that any system of rules and regulations which has been in action through the instruments and by the officials for the benefit of the general public is known as governance. Now governance can be of many types. Governance can be corporate governance. Governance can be public governance. In public governance, the government, the established government which people vote for and we have a parliamentary system so you know we have a president and the prime minister and the responsible government and then the bureaucracy and uh, to maintain justice in the society we have courts and integrated judiciary so this is the system of governance in india okay and the functioning of this system is called as public governance but when we are talking about corporate governance it is the functioning of companies Corporate governance deals with companies. You can also have a non-profit organization, 
non governmental organization governance is also involved in that even in self help group there is some amount of governance non banking financial companies also have governance part in it so governance is how an organization is functioning how it is processing is it able to reach its goals through whatever stipulated measures it has taken and the measures could be the instruments such as the rules and the laws and the regulation which has been made in the light of the goals which they want to achieve so for public governance the goal is the maximization of social justice economic justice and political justice in the country to maintain equality fraternity and unity in the country for the benefit of the people in achieving their potential but when it comes to corporate governance the one major idea is profit maximization profit maximization along with the profit maximization we also have a concept of giving back to the society you know if you have established a company it is running very well you have to do something corporate social responsibility is one of the example how you give back to the society if you are making profits and the profits are continuous for 3 years for 4 years there must be some percentage of that uh, profit which you should give back to the society in form of some public uh, you know service so corporate governance deals with profit maximization and corporate governance deal with deals with companies so we have a companies act okay so the first element of governance is that the company has to run according to the companies act of 2013 if it is not running according to the companies act then the corporate governance itself is faulty let's say if it is running according to the companies act then what else is needed in a corporate governance there will be defined positions you know there will be a ceo there will be a manufacturing unit and there will be a head of that manufacturing unit there will be analysts the people who analyzes the data of what they are acquiring what they are selling what kind of products they are making how to refine those products how to serve people better by making those uh, th those products even more better in quality all those things we have different departments in a company which look after the operations of the company or the functioning of the company so when you have these posts they are the people who discharges duty and they have power in their hand they have signatory power in their hand by the virtue of uh, their signature on a piece of paper they can make decisions for example somebody is responsible for hiring okay hiring for a company to run you need people who can work for the company so you need a, need a hiring unit also when a company is run there is some government linkage some sort of government linkage where you have to take permissions from the government or you have to submit audit reports to the government or you you uh, are in a way accountable to the government so all those uh, government linkages there is a separate department in companies we look after uh, government linkages for permissions and for accountability we have a hiring unit we have a manufacturing unit then we have a selling unit okay we have audit unit so roughly all these things combine together in in the company to make its governance better so the, what is happening here division of labor one person or a group of people cannot do everything so they have divided the work among themselves and we have a head in audit department and selling department manufacturing hiring department and government linkages department under that head 
people are working for example this is the head and he has a team of let's say five and one two three four five and they may have their own people working under them so this is the hierarchy uh, through which the governance structure work at the top of all this can be the ceo of the company or the board of directors of the company can be anybody okay so this is what corporate governance is all about now what is the role of moral integrity in this structure of corporate governance and what is the role of uh, professional efficiency in the structure of corporate governance so before understanding the role of moral integrity let us understand what integrity and moral integrity means it is a sense of honesty okay when you are making any decision the decision has to be ethical and should contain morality that is what is moral integrity is so you can be head of any department here you can be one of the employee working under a uh, head in uh, your unit if you have a decision making authority that decision making authority has to have moral sense into it has to be ethical and al along with everything you need to be honest for whatever you are doing and if that is missing to a great extent moral integrity is missing in the whole structure of corporate governance let us come to an example for example government linkages all of you remember bhopal gas tragedy what happened in bhopal gas tragedy there was uh, a permission seeking which needs to be done a government needs to give permission uh, because uh, it was a pesticide company union carbide it was making pesticides and it contains a lot much of poisonous gas uh, in the form of liquid methyl isocyanate which if mixed with water gives a volatile reaction and in that volatility the temperature of the liquid methyl isocyanate increases to thousands of degrees which ultimately turns into smoke vaporizes and that smoke the vapor comes out from the chimney and that's poisonous uh, vapor and that is what uh, you know people people uh, were breathing within uh, three days about 10,000 people died in Bhopal and why it has happened Th there are many factors but let let us focus on this government linkage is one uh, the union carbide and the managers and and the people who were responsible for taking permission from the government has bribed the government ministers at that time the bureaucracy at that time to obtain permission to link three tanks together so these are tank number one tank number two tank number three and all of them contain methyl isocyanate inside it so the government regulation the safety measures made by the government has to say that uh, these are stand alone tanks and they should not be linked because if it is linked and if it is 30 ton of methyl mic gas mic liquid inside it and 30 tons here and 30 tons here if they are separate you only have 30 tons means if some disaster happens if some something wrong happens uh, only 30 ton will be at risk that means that if the poisonous gas comes up the quantity of it will be very less but the moment you combine these three and link them in total it will be 90 according to the safety measures and the regulation this was not possible but through bribery permission was obtained to link these three tanks and when because of uh, errors by people inside and the structural problems inside the and, and the corruption what happened all these uh, tanks which were containing of mic uh, liquid turned into vapors causing the disastrous environment in Bhopal in 1984 so that is what can happen was taking permission from the government for something like this involves moral integrity that is the question we have to ask 
many times the corporate in corporate governance for maximization of the profit the managers the ceos the head of the institutions uh, you know the the uh, these units head of these units they try to seek the permission of the government through persuasion through through bribery through you know several methods through force or you know by luring them into giving political uh, donations anything can happen but that does not involve moral integrity it moral integrity simply means that when you are seeking permission from government it has to be ethical it has to be moral the foundation of it has to be honesty and integrity the important element has to be accountability and transparency that whoever is taking that permission and whoever is making the decision has to be accountable for it that is what is called moral integrity and it is of paramount importance in corporate governance simply if you are doing hiring and you are doing nepotism here then again moral integrity is at loss you are doing manufacturing but you are uh, picking up products which are uh, environmentally hazardous so that your cost of making the product decreases then again moral integrity is not involved in your decision making same is with selling and same is with auditing if you are not showing things in a proper light you are hiding something information is not provided properly and you are making tons of black money this this all happens in corporate governance and that is the reason why moral integrity becomes a paramount importance in corporate governance now comes the second issue professional efficiency professional efficiency simply means you should conduct your functioning in such a way that there is minimum input with maximum output so the input has to be minimum and the output has to be maximum also proficiency comes when you have processes made having rules and regulations having accountability for all the units the uh, lower staff is responsible and accountable to the higher staff the higher staff is accountable to the ceo who in turn is accountable to the board of directors this is what is the process of a uh, company and manufacturing unit or can be anything company can be a manufacturing unit or a service company or uh, it can be a, a innovation based company but there is a structure to it there is a governance structure to it and the accountabilities are fixed transparencies are there one of the uh, great way of accountability is the minutes of the meeting by applying this one single formula of minutes of the meeting you can make uh, the decision makers accountable for their decisions so the efficiency comes only when you have processes and processes here simply means that whatever you are doing despite of absence of a person the process is in motion for example the owner of the company or the one who has established the company is no more he let's say he passes away he is dead so the company crushes down no it should not if he has made the processes does not matter whether the person lives or dies the company will keep running because there are processes there are ways for example if some unfortunate incident happens for example if the president dies in the office this has happened in india twice then there is a mechanism of how you should appoint another person as the president and for that particular reason vice president becomes the president so there is a process the country cannot stop just because a person has died similarly 
in corporate governance also if one of those person who is the head of this unit he goes away on vacation or that person resigns immediately or has met an accident or unfortunately he dies or she dies that does not stop the company from functioning that is what is called processes and the processes processes has to be efficient that means there is minimum effort required and it brings maximum outcome so we have given examples also government linkages and how moral uh, integrity is important those are suitable examples which you can quote in your answer uh, about hiring about manufacturing and you in the question you have to define first what is corporate governance what is moral integrity and what is professional prof, uh, professional efficiency and along with it you have to show the linkage that without moral integrity and without professional efficiency the corporate governance will degenerate ultimately hurting the profit maximization of the company in the longer term in short term the company can make profits but to survive in a long term uh, in the competitive environment company has to adhere to laws rules and regulation in this case the companies act of 2020 uh, 2013 which ultimately is responsible to the constitution nothing can go outside the limits of the constitution no provision of any law including the companies act can infringe the provisions of the constitution of india so this is what is uh the answer now i have explained you in a greater length for your better understanding but just try uh to summarize this answer within 150 words it is always good if you have the full knowledge of the subject and then you write the answer rather than having half knowledge or no knowledge at all and then uh you know hitting around the bush that that will not help you much in gaining marks if you know the concept of corporate governance uh, moral integrity and professional profes professional efficiency and how they are interlinked with each other you can very well make a very good answer for your mains examination let's come to the uh, second question which is corruption is the manifestation of failure of core values in the society they are talking about corruption here and it is saying how corruption comes up in the society when there is lack of moral values or when there is a degeneration of moral values in the society or failure of core values in the society the second part of the question says in your opinion what measures can be adopted to uplift the core values in the society so two important concepts here one is corruption and second is core values core values this is one concept and when those core values are lost or they are degenerated or they are decreased as is written in the question failure of core values then the result is corruption so you should have knowledge about these two concepts first concept is core values and second concept is corruption so to understand how they are interlinked let us first delve into what corruption means corruption is opposite to probity the opposite of probity is corruption what is probity it means strong moral sense it does not have a stand alone alone definition of its own but probity involves the important elements of accountability transparency characterfulness 
uprightness honesty and integrity so if you have characterfulness or you have uprightness you have accountability integrity and honesty transparency in the system the opposite of it would be corruption for example instead of transparency you have secrecy instead of integrity and honesty you have dishonesty instead of accountability you have no accountability and whoever takes that decision is not accountable as happens in public administration because the rules and the laws and the regulation is so much and so cumbersome and the people who are making it have not defined clear rules and regulations in such a way that it confirms the accountability on one person so the accountability is spread over too many people and hence nobody is responsible so that is what is lack of responsibility in indian context then if you do not have the character and the uprightness in all the matters of ethics and morality the quality of man is very important if the quality of man is not good that means the uprightness and characterfulness is not there it becomes very difficult to ensure morality ensure probity and ensure ethical governance so our opposite to it is corruption how can corruption be manifested in the society there are few examples such as bribery it is very common we see it everywhere official asking for money demanding for money or he has been paid money without even asking for it so this is what is called bribery which is very common even from the smallest of the business to the biggest of the business like acquisition of uh, uh, warships and uh, aeroplanes and and uh, you know the defense material everywhere bribery is involved there is this cut of the officials and the politicians and the middlemen everywhere so this bribery is a very basic form of corruption which we see in our society prevalent in our society second is embezzlement or misappropriation embezzlement or misappropriation you try to misappropriate the value of a resource let's say a land which could have been sold by the government in 100 crores have been sold in 80 crores or 50 crores to a company okay that is misappropriation misappropriation of fund also means that uh, the funds which were set aside for a particular project let's say for the betterment of the women child in villages has been spent on luxuries of uh, uh, you know of providing housings to to mlas or mps in that area so this is also called misappropriation of fund so misappropriation then kickbacks if you favor some company they give you some money or your cut in return that's called kickbacks okay crony capitalism is another example then you have patronage or nepotism you know very well what is nepotism you allow only your relatives and your blood uh, relatives and the extended family to sit on a particular post or you make uh, the work easy for them that's what is called nepotism it happens in public services also in private services that is why uh, to avoid this happening in public services there is a concept of examinations okay that anybody who passes the examination and holds the merit will be allowed to hold the post in government since government is a model employer nepotism cannot be allowed in governance patronage so these are few examples of corruption now our question here asks 
that when there is loss or failure of the core values these things can happen there will be no more accountability transparency characterfulness in the people and also in the instruments of governance and this all happens because of the failure of the core value so we should also know what is core value value and core value so we have few constitutional values what are constitutional values they are mentioned in our preamble there has to be justice social justice economic justice political justice equality has to be there status and opportunity has to be given to everybody where in an equal proportion there is also a concept of reservations in india where the downtrodden have been uplifted uh, to the mainstream society for that's also a concept of equality you know unequals cannot be uh, treated uh, equally then we have unity and integrity of the nation those are the core constitutional values but there are other values in the society such as characterfulness such as uprightness such as accountability and transparency okay and these values in the governance when they are missing what ends up happening is corruption so this thing which we have defined in probity characterfulness uprightness accountability integrity and honesty transparency are also those core values which are responsible for minimizing the corruption or eliminating the corruption in the society so core values are constitutional core values and general core values of accountability honesty integrity and things like that we have already discussed so the question says that failure of core values failure of these values results in corruption in the society and we can see the very clear linkages between the two now let us delve into why those core values are a failure in today's modern society one of the reason is there is more of materialism and less of spiritualism there is less god fearing uh, attitude among the people okay so spiritualism is missing another thing if we come to the uh, governance part the checks and balances are not proper or there are loopholes loopholes checks and balances problem this thing helps the politicians or the bureaucrats sitting in powerful positions to exploit the public funds and enter into the practices of corruption okay so these are few uh, reasons why core values are failing then we in a way also uh, put too much value on the person who is being corrupt or uh, the uh, in a way we can say glorifying the corrupt person glorification of corrupt then one more thing article 311 which saves the bureaucrats this article has came in the way of accountability too many times we cannot or the tribunals cannot directly punish the public officials the bureaucrats because of this article which also results in increasing their confidence in doing the corrupt activities in the government then the rules and the regulations which have been made have been deliberately formed in such a way where you can see the loopholes and by exploitation of those loopholes the core values can be exploited and that can result in corruption so these are few examples these are few reasons why the core values are decreasing in the society so our question asks about why the failure of core values results in corruption so we have i think very well uh, framed all the concepts in a very organized way and we have given the answer that because of 
the failure of core values because of these reasons because of the loopholes because there is no uh, punishment appropriate punishment or the uh, you know that too much time is taken by the judiciary or the tribunals to punish an official or the protection available to the officials under article 311 and then the loopholes created by officials all these things are happening in the society which gives them confidence to involve themselves in corrupt activities and these core values the constitutional core values and the general core values of accountability integrity honesty characterfulness they have also been decreasing or failing over the period of time which results in bribery which results in embezzlements disproportionate incomes and embezzlement uh, sorry uh, kickbacks and uh, patronages and nepotism so there is a great link between the failure of core values and corruption in the society so i hope uh, this information helps you in writing your uh, answer for the civil services main examination you have to give a proper conclusion and that conclusion also should involve the future way forward the what is the way forward this question also asks that in your opinion what measures can be adopted to uplift the core values in the society so it is already asking about the future forwards to uplift the core values in the society there can be two ways first is the external way and second is the internal way when you talk about the internal way you have to understand why do you do corruption why do you get involved in a corrupt activity the primary reason is to amass wealth for the betterment of the future generation the second reason is to seek pleasure and happiness so through emotional intelligence you can understand what happiness really means why what is joy and what is blissfulness if we really delve into this concept we understand that serving other people brings more joy to us than serving ourselves public service is more beneficial for our happy mindset and happiness than self care or selfishness so you need emotional intelligence and attitude positive attitude towards the public service in order to uplift the core values we also as a society has to stop glorifying the corrupt practices and the corrupt people in the society so this is in a way internal mechanism through self awareness and through self regulation where you can change your attitude you can change the emotional patterns behaviors uh, and uh, other elements of your attitude in order to bring a positive change in uh, corrupt practices that means to eliminate corruption then there are external ways of doing it the internal ways in a in a broader sense involves the effort not only from the society but the maximum effort has to come from the individual himself you have to have a rational mind in order to understand that having too much of corrupt money is not going to make you happy but rather it is going to make you more fearful that what if i get caught tomorrow and my whole image is destroyed and you also have to understand the bad impact of corruption on the society several people who are downtrodden several people who are poor who can get the benefit of a particular scheme but they are not getting because the public money is going into the pockets of the officials or politicians so a great deal of self awareness a great deal of self regulation is needed this is the internal way of solving the uh, problem of failure of core values in the society we also have an external mechanism of solving it which comes through the governance practices in india organizations such as enforcement directorate central vigilance commission central bureau of investigations parliamentary and cabinet committees 
social audits these are external mechanisms to reduce the menace of corruption in the society so i hope we fully answer the uh, the question and the requirement of the question in this discussion which says that corruption is the manifestation of failure of core values in the society so corruption is the result of failure of the core values we have seen how those core values are failing why those core values are failing what are those core values and how the failure of core values results in corruption then again we have seen how through internal mechanisms and external mechanisms those core values can be restored now let us come to the third question and the final question there is a statement in question number 3 and and it, the question says that given below are three quotations of great thinkers we are going to discuss the first one which is the quotation by mahatma gandhi and uh, they ask that what do each of these quotations convey to you in the present context so the first uh, quotation by mahatma gandhi is the simplest act of kindness are by far more powerful than a thousand heads bowing in prayer that simply means that he is talking about the importance of action over sitting down and praying act of kindness how act of kindness is more important than praying so even if thousand people are praying and one person is acting through kindness by compassion and empathy that is more important than prayer itself so it is said that prayer is the first means of the weak and the last mean of the strong so any person who is a strong person will always try to act first rather than praying this is also said by uh, vivekanand in many of his speeches and talks and writings that action is necessary to eliminate poverty to eliminate hunger in our society we should be strong we should go on and start work and should not stop ourselves until we achieve whatever goal we have set that applies to material world and the spiritual world as well that applies to everything you have to act you cannot just sit down and pray once you have acted with the full capacity then praying helps i am remember uh, I, i recall this one uh, incidents which i have uh, wrote uh, i have read in wings of fire that was a book written by uh, late president of india uh, dr apj e. abdul kalam in which he writes that we had limited resources when this guide integrated guided missile development program was initiated in india they had very limited resources and he was made the head of it so what did they do they said that uh, there were failures and every time uh, scientists face failures and they have to learn and build upon those failures to become successful they have to refine their working refine the product they are making by learning and they cannot be emotional about it they have to be very emotionally intelligent and mature in order to progress because what work they are doing is a national uh, you know Uh, safety work or uh, you know some work which involves the great honor of the nation so it's not a it's not a light work it's a very heavy work they are doing it's it's a work with honor there's so much of uh, moral integrity involved in all those things so during making a missile development program uh, under that program when they were working on a particular uh, long range missile he said that we have limited resources so what abdul kalam has decided and conveyed to its team is that we are going to double our hard work 
सो हार्ड वर्क विल बी डबल्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल दे वर वर्किंग फॉर एट आवर्स नाउ दे विल बी वर्किंग फॉर सिक्सटीन आवर्स एंड दे हैव एक्चुअली डन इट दे हैव डबल्ड देयर हार्ड वर्क एंड देन लेफ्ट एवरी थिंग लेफ्ट एवरी थिंग ऑन गॉड थिंक अबाउट इट इफ दे वर वर्किंग फॉर एट आवर्स एंड दे कंटिन्यू टू वर्क फॉर एट आवर्स एंड लिविंग एवरी थिंग ऑन गॉड वुड गॉड हेल्प दैम वुड द प्रेयर्स हेल्प दैम नो these prayers are only answered the nature or the existence of god whatever you call them only answers when you do your 100% you do your action that is what bhagavad gita says you have to act without thinking about the result and you have to act according to your dharma if you are a teacher teach properly if you are a student study properly that is what it is it's very simple we make the life complicated so hard work doubled and left everything to the god so general examples if we give uh, from our daily life for example you see a person has been hit by a car and uh, on the road and he is there bleeding few people do not help him by taking him to the hospital rather pray for the uh, well being of that person that oh god you know something has happened something miserable and bad has happened please save this person better would be if you just jump out of your car take the person to the hospital call the ambulance call the police or if there is no time then take the person in your own car to the hospital to the nearby hospital that few minutes can save the person's life that is the touch of kindness which you give into your act which mahatma gandhi is saying is more important than thousand heads praying or bowing in prayer so in public governance when uh, you uh, become a bureaucrat and you are sitting on a particular post and you have decisions to make or you have policies and regulations to make what kind of policies and regulations you are making what kind of decisions you are taking are those decisions based on the action taken by the government or government is at the back seat and letting whatever is happening happen on its own there are few areas which are called as uh, you know difficult areas or crime areas in in metropolitans where it is dangerous for you to go what government is doing wishing that the things will get better or acting that is uh, how you can explain something in governance but this particular quotation that the simplest act of kindness are far more powerful than a thousand going heads invokes some kind of courage in a person courage in an uh, individual to act does not matter whether this person is acting in personal capacity private capacity or a government capacity or uh, as an as an uh, government official think of a situation if you are in a area where there has been a problem related with uh, terrorists and uh, a particular locality is under terrorist attack you had a team of five soldiers what will you do will you act or will you just stay there praying that maybe you know something happens and somehow these people uh, stop firing on the common masses when the mumbai attack took place the people who were firing the terrorists had machine guns in their hand which can fire so many bullets in a minute the police personals there only had a danda in their hand or a rifle which you know do not work properly but instead of that instead of uh, putting their life in safety they have put their life in danger and they have Uh, you know proved their metal 
वन ऑफ द पुलिस पर्सनल हैज चम्ड ऑन अजमल कसाब टू कैच हिम एंड ही न्यू दैट द पर्सन हैज अ मशीन गन एंड इफ ही शूट्स इट इज हिज लाइफ विच इज इन डेंजर बट ही डज नॉट सिट देयर और हाइड हिमसेल्फ और वो हिज हैड इन प्रेयर रादर एक्टेड एंड वॉट एंडेड अप हैपनिंग इज दैट we had a proof that these terrorists came from pakistan and if that person would have been killed there would be nobody to speak they have caught him alive because of the valor of one policeman so always action is very important and praying comes afterwards again do not forget one quotation that prayer is the first means of the weak and the last means of the strong so in my understanding that is what this statement conveys now we have our own knowledge basis you can come up with some other interpretation also but the core structure is going to be almost same you can write this answer with your own understanding also with your own examples also so students uh, we have discussed three important questions from 2023 examination of ethics we are going to take up more questions like this in the coming sessions do not forget to enroll for 250 batch the uh, 250 questions batch which is going to come up in this uh, month of july and which is going to improve your mains preparation for the civil service examination of 2024 and of 2025 so whoever wants to improve in the ethics preparation can join this course thank you very much for listening